It is episode 12 of the Rapid Rating Climb series on chess.com. And if you want to see the rest of the episodes, check out the playlist below. My opponent plays the French defense. And you can play a bunch of things against the French. But I prefer playing B3. My favorite line. And it's called the Horwitz attack. And we just give up the pawn. We give up the pawn so that we can develop the dark squared bishop to the long diagonal. Now, does that look a bit foolish? Maybe. Maybe it does. But we're going to win the pawn back. And there's very little that black can actually do about that. So we are going to play knight c3 to attack the pawn first off. And white, sorry, not white, black needs to find a way to defend it. Knight f6 is the most rational move, but after queen e2, black doesn't have a good way to defend it again. He can play queen down to d4 to defend it, but the queen is then very vulnerable in the center, especially because she's lined up with the bishop. And we can also try and gambit a second pawn with f3, and the knight will come out with tempo on the queen, which is a really fun line. So queen e2 is the move, and black is going to have to find a way to hold on to the pawn, or more likely, give the pawn back and try and get castled and save quickly. So you can often see bishop e7 castles in this position. Now you don't actually have to let black do what he wants to do. You can play moves like g4, g5 to try and dislodge the knight so that when you take, black can't trade. Because if you can take with the knight and his knight ends up on a square like d5, then this bishop is essentially uncontested because this bishop can't contest on f6 because your knight controls that square. It's a very common idea in this opening. Yes, like I said, it is a bit weird. It is somewhat dubious. I do use it in classical games, like over-the-board classical games, and I have really good success with it, so there's no reason it wouldn't be good online. I'm just looking at my opponent's country. I have no idea what that flag is. I'm normally quite good with flags. I'm going to guess it's some random island. Sierra Leone. That's in Africa, right? I'm sure that's in Africa. Yeah, I don't know that flag. <laughs> I'm normally pretty good with flags because I used to play FIFA like all the time when I was little. And if any of you guys um, used to play FIFA, you'll know <laughs> you'll know what I'm on about. That's a weird move. If you develop the knight, normally the knight comes to c6 to go to d4 to try and set up some forking, Ooh. set up some forking ideas. The knight on d7, I guess the idea is takes the there and then knight f6 to replace the knight but we don't have to give black an easy option here we can just castle and the pawn is still hanging black could maybe play knight c5 to hold on to it and it's not easy to dislodge that knight however if we go g4 knight c5, g5, knight d5. Then this pawn is quite weak. If we go h4... Oh, well, I'm trying to calculate. We might just be better off castling. Might be better to castle. Castles knight c5 is my problem. But then this thing works again, and we're going to win this back anyway. So that's castle first. And then we can go for the g4, g5 plan. The only thing I wasn't happy with, with g4, g5, is if this knight comes to d5 and takes on c3. If we're not castled yet, I want to take back with the d-pawn to open up my rook on the d-file. But if we don't castle before we take then we won't be able to because the queen will be controlling d1 and stopping us from castling because you can't castle through a check. e5 is surprising. That is really surprising. 
that feels really weakening. We could even take, because after takes, takes, this pawn is probably falling after like bishop d6, d4. But if we take, black can just ignore us. He can just play a move like bishop e7 in castle. So g4, g5 looks quite tempting to me. I don't see a problem. Also, the knight can't come to d5 anymore because the queen's connection is cut off and d6 no longer controls it. So I'm going to go g4. If we get g5 in, the knight also can't retreat back to d7, so he'll have to go back to g8, which, you know, is obviously a big win for us. By the way, if you made it this far into the video, then I would assume you're enjoying it, and if you are enjoying it, you're going to want to see, you know, the upcoming episodes of the series, because we're going to 2000 Lilo, at least, and so you might want to drop a subscribe, so you get notified when the next episode comes out. Just saying. So knight c5. Knight c5. Defends e4. And it also frees up the d7 square and adds a defender to the d5 square if we play g5. Logical. However, if we go g5, if knight d7, I think the position's horrible for black. So we would assume he goes knight d5. There we could take, and I think that's good for us because our bishop also opens up on e5, right? My only concern is g5, bishop g4, attacking the queen. But then maybe we have f3, because if this pawn takes, then e5 hangs. And the knight will be hanging at the end of any line. So I think that works. I think that works. As I say, that was my only problem was bishop g4 first. Because our queen is so nicely placed on e2. But bishop g4 f3 I think exposes the weakness of e5. The pawn is kind of pinned. Like the e4 pawn is kind of pinned to the e5 pawn. Because, like I say, if e5 falls, then we get to take it with a check, and then the knight falls. More likely, I expect knight d5, but then knight e4, I think we're good. Knight d7 looks miserable. I didn't really think he could play this move, because what's his knight doing? It's defending e5, but it looks horrible. Could take here. And after knight takes, queen takes. If queen g5, knight f3 comes with tempo, I'm very happy with that position. Our bishop's going to get out. I think that's completely winning. I'm more than happy to give up a pawn. This is in the spirit of the opening. This is a gambit opening. I'm going to win the pawn back, but if I have to give up a pawn again for insane activity, I'm going to take it. That's just my playing style. And I'd also encourage you, if you want to improve, to try and play in a similar style because it makes you like more tactically aware and better at like your positional understanding if you're less concerned about material, in my opinion. Taking looks natural. I don't see a problem with it. Again, e5 is weak. Our queen is going to be pinning the pawn to the king if our knight moves or is traded. And it also opens up our bishop. You can make a case for bishop g2. Mm. But then if black takes on g5, it comes with an attack on the undefended bishop. So I think you've got to take here. And again, like I say, after takes, I don't care if he takes that. I'm more than happy, in fact, because my knight comes out of tempo, my rook's probably going to come to the g-file. Once this pawn falls, the diagonal is going to be exposed. 
I think that's a mistake from Black. I really do. Maybe his intention is knight f3, queen f4? Maybe that's the idea? If takes takes, rookie one check, king slides to d8. Knight g5, it looks over. Because this pawn is too weak, my bishop is too strong. I think that's winning. And this bishop can always come out to c4 to target f7 further. If knight f3, queen g6 offering a trade of queens, maybe that's the other idea. I don't really want to trade queens. Hmm. Maybe that's what he wants. Can we make a better threat? Can we make a better threat? I did say I wasn't concerned about giving the pawn up, but I did miss queen g6. I don't think it's a problem, though. Even if we have to waste a tempo moving our queen, I think we're still in great shape. So I'm not concerned. I just want to be accurate. We could go knight f3, queen g6, queen e3. I'm not worried about bishop c5 ideas because d4 plays on the pin. And then we're going to win this pawn probably quite easily. Also, if the queen goes to g6, then rook g1 is going to come with a lot of venom down the g-file, especially if he tries to get this bishop out. So this makes a lot of sense to me. Again, queen f4 I think loses on the spot. Because after we trade queens, the e-file opens. Rook e1. If bishop e7 blocks, then we can take on g7. And it's equal material. Is it? Yeah, equal material. But his pawn structure is absolutely ruined because he's got doubled isolated f-pawns. I have full faith I can win that position. Is there anything better? Is what we've got to check. You can go rookie one immediately. But after the trade, we're attacking this. But he can even just go for bishop d6 and force a bunch of trades. Or maybe we have d4 there. But even if we win this pawn, then it's just equal material. So I think taking makes more sense. To ruin the pawn structure, open our bishop up, and open up the e-file for our rook. So we're going to give this check. Again, king d8 I think loses to knight g5. There's no way to defend the f7 pawn. And if you play rook g1 trying to save the um, rook, then knight f7 is mate. Because the king is surrounded by his own pieces. So bishop e7 is expected. And there's no knockout blow, like I was saying. But it does look incredibly good for me. Even still. We could go bishop g7, rook g8, bishop h6. Targeting the f4 pawn. And I think we're going to end up a pawn up, because I don't see how he defends it. It's worth noting the king can't actually castle because the bishop is under attack. So there are ideas of bishop c4 followed by knight g5 and it's very difficult to defend f7. Knight g5 obviously the bishop can't take because it's pinned. But my concern is bishop c4 knight b6. And then I think black's getting out. So, I think bishop g7 is more accurate. We win our pawn back. His structure is ruined. Don't see a problem with it. 
we're also hindering the development of the knight because our bishop could try and come to f6 to win the bishop outright. That's actually a good point. If bishop takes g7, which we're going to play, rook g8 is the only move. If we put our bishop on h6, then this knight can move, right? But if we move our bishop to, I don't know, b2, just go straight back, then if his knight goes to a square like b6, ah, uh, bishop f6, knight b5 defends. But if we go bishop b2, knight b6, bishop a3, I don't know how he defends that. Because if knight d5, it doesn't come with an attack on the bishop, and c4 forces the knight to move, and we win the bishop. Because it's pinned to the king. This pawn's going to drop anyway. And if we bring our bishop out this way then the rook's not going to be able to infiltrate. So bishop b2 looks really good. Bishop b2, b6 prepares c5 to block off the diagonal though. And it prepares to develop this bishop. So bishop b2, b6. Then we have bishop b5. And we're threatening ideas like knight e5 playing on the pin of the knight and if our opponent plays a move like king d8 then bishop c6 freezes black's position that looks really promising to me maybe he can go c5 straight away maybe tricky move to find though i think we're posing a lot of problems which is what chess is about, really. King d8. Hmm. It's logical. Logical. Bishop g... Sorry, c4 attacks f7. Bishop g2, I think, fails to rook g1. And we're infiltrating. So we could set that trap, actually. I think that's a nice trap. Now... Is there anything better? If bishop c4, bishop f6, then I think we just take. I think. Although we could play bishop a3 to avoid the trade of bishops. That actually might even be better. So bishop c4. We're trying to bait his rook in. We're also targeting f7. Yeah, I think that's a mistake. I think that's a mistake. Because after rook g1, if rook takes f2, this looks winning. This looks very winning. Let's play it. I prefer to move my h rook because my e rook is already doing a great job on the e file. So why not get this rook into the game? After rook f2, the knight will be hanging, yes. But we can always move the knight to a square like d4. Or maybe e5 if we can dislodge this knight. So we check. And he's going to have to play one of these moves. Neither of them look nice. If the knight moves... We could take the bishop and if king takes bishop a3 looks a bit complicated is there an easier way to go about it now bearing in mind the knight is hanging if knight f8 we might just be able to play knight e5 threatening f7 it does how it might allow bishop e6 though knight g5 bishop takes because that wouldn't allow 
bishop e6 because the knight controls it, right? But if knight g5, bishop takes g5, then the knight is undefended. So rook takes knight. King d7. Rook takes pawn. King back to d8. Give another check. King back to d7. And then bishop e6. I think wins the bishop. I think that wins a piece. Knight g5. And if he doesn't take it, then we're taking on f7. And it looks horrific. Is there anything more concrete? Again, rook takes e7. King takes bishop a3. But then this knight hangs at the end of the line. Knight e5, like I say, bishop e6. If we take it, I think black gets out. I think we need the light squared bishop. We can't just take here because the knight falls. Bishop g7. Rook takes knight. Takes, takes, takes there. Oh, does that go into the same line? Check. Huh. I'm trying to be accurate. Knight g5. Bishop takes. Rook f8. King d7. Rook f7. King d8. Rook f8. King d7. Bishop e6. Wins a piece. I think. Does it? Bishop g7 might be cleaner. Hmm. Or well, maybe we can double rooks on the back rank. Like knight g5, bishop takes, rook f8, king d7, rook f7, king d8, rook f8, king d7. Why is it so difficult? <laughs> Why can't this just be easy? Um, hmm. Okay, I'm going to go for knight g5. I spent so long there. I spent like three and a half minutes. I think this works though. I really do. And maybe it's wrong. Maybe I'm taking the wrong approach. But it looks very logical. Because I've this this king has no good escape. I was looking at the king coming back and forth with the checks. I didn't look if the king advanced. Because I thought we should be easily winning after we double rooks on the back rank and win this bishop. The only concern is that we could get back ranked. So we need to move this bishop first so that the king can move to b2. Although bishop d4 will always come with a tempo on the rook. So that might be better. That that might be why moving the knight is better. Because there is no rook f3 in some of these lines. So that bishop d4 does come with tempo and allows this rook to go on to the 8th rank. Okay, I didn't even consider that move. Because I assumed it just lost. I assumed that was just losing. Is it? Let's give a check. I guess the king can run. And we can't actually take the bishop. Oh, no, we can, because the bishop covers f1. Oh, okay. Okay, 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 okay. Hmm. 
Hmm. Again, this is not easy though. Yeah, I know I'm low on time. Uh... I'm not sure what the correct configuration is. I'm really not. actually quite annoying that move bishop f5 so I don't know how to set the pieces up to deliver the checkmate or win material it's just kind of holding on I might be missing something but well, maybe I had rook oh, maybe I had rook takes e7 he might repeat. Maybe rook e7, king e7, bishop a3. Then maybe the king comes out. Okay, so he drops back. It's not making my life easy. At all. Actually, going to go back because we're now threatening the bishop. If the king comes here, rook e7, king e7, bishop a3, king f6. There, there, there. King f6. Bishop f8. Okay, let's sack the rook. This this has to be winning. This has to be. There's no way it isn't. Bishop a3. King f6 is the only move. I'd assume. D7 is a move? We're going to have two pieces for a rook. And with the bishop pair, I'm hoping that's winning. Rook h2 could be a problem with this pawn, though. Yeah, king f6. But here I thought bishop f8 was winning. Now, not rook takes, I don't want to trade. I want to set up discoveries against this undefended rook. I don't see how he defends it. The king can't move off of a dark square. It's really trapped. Like, there's so many pieces boxing the king in right now. It actually has zero moves. Bishop g7, king g6. We're just going to win the rook anyway. But there might be some kind of mate there. With like, I don't know, knight e5. But we can force the king away so we just win a clean rook. Okay. Oh, the bishop defends. Oh, bishop defends. He's finding some good moves. Okay, let's give a check. King moves. Where's the knockout? Here. is tough. This is a really mad king hunt right now. Our pieces are working perfectly to defend each other. He could go back to e7. Didn't actually consider that move. We might be forced to trade if he does do that. But with, like, like I said, with the bishop pair, this should be very good, although we do have 30 seconds, which is a problem. Definitely a problem. Yeah, we have no good way to check him. So we should take. Save our time. Um, I want to retreat the knight. I'm going to go here to access e4. Again, 
Again, rook f1 check is not a move. He could take this. Could take that, which could be concerning. We are attacking h7, but rook takes would defend h7. We do have this, though. Pins the pawn to the rook. He can play rook h1 check first. Here, I think we just take. h6. Maybe that's a move. Knight f3. Rook f2. It's not easy. Really, really not easy. So if h6, maybe knight e4 to take up the f2 square. So he could advance to f3, but then the rook would hang again. Although h6, knight e4, rook h1 check, king moves, then f3, then f3. very complicated we do control the f1 square with the bishop which is nice we could set up a dart squared blockade with something like this bringing the bishop to e3 and the knight to f2 and then try and hunt pawns it's viable seems like a viable way of going about it Ooh. Okay, interesting, knight f3, rook h3, rook's kind of overloaded though, we don't actually have to do anything here, could just move the king in, I actually like that plan, f3 is still not, well, f3, knight takes f3, okay, h6 is on the board, knight e4 sets up a trap of bishop f6, I think I like that, also looking to come back to f2 and set up that dark square blockade I was on about, so that's nice, rook's got to move really to stop this, rook h1, king e2, bishop g4, king f2, rook h2, knight defend c2, king g1, rook moves to, it's actually running out of squares, h3, And then this comes with a fork. Okay, I like that. Let's see if we get that line. I just kind of trusted he wouldn't have any kind of impressive attack. It feels like he doesn't have enough pieces to do it. And there's always threats of our own available. His king is kind of weak. I mean, it's hard to actually exploit it. Obviously, we are setting up bishop f6, so f4 is now hanging as well. Bear in mind, f3, bishop f6 picks up the rook. Rook h1, king moves, maybe then f3. But then our bishop controls h2, so there's no rook check. So we might just be able to take on c7, h5. I'm not really scared of his pawns. Maybe I should be, but I'm not. We can even play moves like bishop f1 to kind of trap the rook. That might actually happen at some point. And if if this f-pawn moves and this rook gets stuck in our own territory, then I think I like it. Yeah, king moves. Rook h2, king g1. And how does he defend f4? Right, that's a problem. If f3, knight here allows rook h2. If 
something in a bush path one. Yeah, I think I want to stop this rook from being able to get behind the pawns as well. Bishop h3 feels kind of suicidal. If, if not for the fact that we can just move the bishop and the pawn hangs, rook f1 isn't a move because our bishop controls that square. Bishop g2 though. But again, we have a dark squared blockade. Feels very safe. That can't be the move. Surely. Um. Okay, let's bring our bishop back. I just want to shore up the defense first. Maybe I allow this. Hmm. Maybe I've allowed that. Where does our knight want to go? That's the question. If h5, what are we doing? What are we doing? I'm going to go d4. We do have a majority on the queen side, so we should push it. Let's move the bishop. h3, is that scary? Then knight moves, but then rook h2. Hmm, c2 does hang at the end of that, and I don't want to give up my c2 pawn. I want to go c4 and d5. So h3, this is very complicated. h3. Maybe we can go bishop back to g3. And again, his rook is very trapped. Ooh. Well, knight g5, knight f3 actually loses a piece. Or does it? Yeah, it does. Let's go c4. Let's continue with the plan. I don't think that moves changes anything. So, tough. Again, h3, I feel like his rook's just getting trapped. As long as we keep our bishop on f1, it can't get out. And if our bishop controls h2, we're good. So we can just put our bishop back on g3. And then we can relocate our knight to wherever we want. Maybe g4. We're not going to take on f3. Because after everything, we're going to lose the piece on f1. Because our king's going to be overloaded. But the knight can help push our own pawns forward. Which... Because bishops are long range pieces, I think should work. Because our king's doing a great job of stopping the pawns. Yeah, let's continue with the plan. If 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 he actually plays h2, his rook's just trapped. He can't actually do anything. He literally can't do anything. He has no movement. I feel like we can just pick up the pawn. It looks greedy, but actually we can just push. Because our knight also controls d7. And the bishop can always come out to h4 to control d8. Again, if rook g1 at any point, we just take on h2. Bishop h3 doesn't do anything, so we just take it. We've put the rook in prison here, and our knight is, has free reign. If the king moves, we can maybe just take on b7. And be up another pawn. Is that necessary? I don't know. Oh, game, please don't freeze on me now. Game, please, 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 please. Oh my god. I don't know if you guys can see this, but my game is really laggy right now. Uh, I'm really scared. I'm really scared. We're on 20 seconds. 
I feel like it might bail on me. If the king goes back to e6, we go back to c5 with the knight and give a check. That's That works. Again, his rook's still in jail. We're up. Two pawns on the queen side now. We've eliminated the threat of these pawns. Oh my god. Wait, I missed that. I missed rook f1. And now he queens. Oh my god. That's game over. That's straight up game over. Yeah, we can just resign. That's as good as got. I can't believe I blundered that. I can't believe I blundered that. I played that game so well. Oh, man. I played that game so well. And I just blundered Rook F1. Ah, damn. That was obvious. That was incredibly obvious. Hmm. Let's see if there was a way to prevent it in the analysis. That's really annoying. That's really annoying. Well, that was a game absolutely full of mistakes by the look of the game review. It, yeah, really does not, does not approve of that game whatsoever. So, I'm sure there'll be mistakes absolutely everywhere, and it should be a fun analysis. I think I definitely had a completely winning position well into the late middle game. But yeah, Rook F1, uh, just an absolute bolt. I don't know why I missed that. I think had I had more time, I would have seen it, but that's just poor time management, really. E46, like I said, this is my favorite line against the French. And Knight BD7 is a bit bad. I can take on e4 straight away, which the computer always likes. But I prefer to kind of like... Castling is kind of a waiting move. And you're kind of just like giving black an opportunity to go wrong. Because it's unlikely that he knows the position. And if you're not playing forcing moves, it's very difficult to black to actually find the correct ideas. And e5 is not the correct idea. I can take it straight away which is apparently better than what I did in the game. And after this, there is no knight f6 because e5 hangs. But I fought bishop d6, and black was good. I can attack the pawn again. Queen e7, rook e1. I guess he just runs out of defenders. If he goes f6, then d4 takes you trade and take on d4 and I guess this is kind of a better version of what we actually got in the game especially because this diagonal is so weak the bishop on c4 is going to be a monster knight's also coming to f5 potentially knight e5 f4 this makes sense this makes sense. It's a complicated line. Um, I guess they're all kind of forcing moves, and so maybe I should have seen it. But g4, I think, is still good. Knight c5 is a mistake because of g5. And here I was calculating bishop g4. But yeah, everything is good for black here. Every everything's winning for black, except for f3. And you can't take it because I take on e5. Whoop. You trade queens and then I just win a knight. F2 doesn't work because I can actually just take on e7. So say you take back and for whatever reason I allow f2. I think I'm still good after I move the knight, block the attack on the rook. Very winning position. So that was why my opponent retreats. Takes, takes, takes. Queen g5 is actually the best move. Knight f3, queen f4, and you do have to take. So I did play that correctly. Queen g6, I planned queen e3, which is the best move. 
And the point is, the rook's coming to the g-file, the bishop's coming out, rook might be coming to the e-file, d4's on the cards because the pawn is pinned. Horrible position. Horrible position for black. He's not going to find safety anywhere. And his bishop, his light square bishop's also blocked in by his knight, which makes development really difficult. So takes takes is good. Rook e1, bishop e7, bishop takes g7, rook g8. Here rook g1 is actually better. Which seems odd. I guess you can't actually exploit this pin. If you play a move like king d8, bishop c4, f7 is going to fall. And I guess there's no rook f8 if the bishop remains on g7. Bishop b2 is therefore a mistake, but king d8 is bad. Bishop c4, rook g2, and yeah, rook hg1 is the best idea. My point was, if takes takes, I'm infiltrating and you're losing, because you have no active pieces. So rook takes f2, rook g8, we are so winning. Bishop f6, I did consider this, removing the defender of the knight, but I didn't see the follow-up. Oh, I just win the bishop back. Like this. And if you take the knight, then I'm just winning everything. I should be seeing that. I really should be seeing that. It's very forcing. Knight g5, though, is the second best move. It is the second best move. Okay. Bishop g7 was also winning. And my point was, after takes, we go into a similar line. King d7, rook f7, king d8, rook f8, king d7, removing the defender of e6, and then bishop e6 check, and you pick up the bishop. Right? That was my idea. Bishop f5 I just missed though. And the main idea is bishop f6 again. And if it takes, takes. You just win the rook. I sh again, I should be seeing that. That's obvious. Very obvious. But I'm so low on the clock. That's the problem. I spent way too much time in the opening. Which is a flaw of mine. It definitely is. King d7. Knight e5 is best. King c8. I did consider rook g7, but I didn't play it. I go back, king d7, and that is an inaccuracy. It's still winning though. Rook c8, bishop g7, king e7. Apparently knight h6, because if this, knight takes f5, comes with check, and then you pick up the rook. Missed that. So rook c8 is a mistake. That's where my advantage really slips. But okay. We've still got a better position. And I'm finding the best moves. Rook h4. Here I should just take on c7. And I guess the point is that I now have, have a completely passed pawn. I don't think I really realised the power of that. So king d1 is a, is a miss. But here... I'm doing well again. F3. Here again I should just be taking on C7. I got spooked by the rook infiltrating, but there's no need. If I take on C7, this is just a passed pawn, and I'm winning. So okay, F3, bishop F1. Still winning, C6. H5. D4, H4. King E6. C4, H3. King E1? Oh, to put the knight on F2. Ah, okay. I guess that's the setup. H2 here is just winning. And I've got to just sack the piece. But I didn't notice rook F1, so this is just a blunder. Again, I should be sacking the piece, but... Yeah, rook f1, and this is game over. Honestly, although we lost, I'm not that disappointed, because I'm very happy with the way the opening went. 
I'm really happy with some of the moves I found with um especially Queen F five. I just instinctively this felt winning and I found the right ideas up until sort of this moment I started to lose the thread a little bit but again I just had such low time in a classical game I've got loads of time and I can find these ideas and I don't think the extra time for my opponent would really help all that much because the opening is very difficult to navigate and the e5 move earlier on, which was a mistake, gets played all the time. It honestly gets played all the time against this opening. So, it's a frustrating loss to take, for sure. But, it's not the end of the world. We'll bounce back next episode, and I will see you in the next episode. And hopefully, we can make up for this one.